Hi, this is Dale Strickler with Green Cover Seed. I'd like to talk today about nitrogen. Nitrogen is probably the, the plant nutrient that's most limiting in most cropping situations. We spend more money on nitrogen fertilizer than on any other plant nutrient. Um, and that's kind of unusual when you think about it because the atmosphere that we breathe that's above every acre we farm is 78 percent nitrogen. There are literally thousands of tons of nitrogen in the atmosphere above every single acre that we farm. But it's completely unavailable to plants. Now getting that nitrogen out of the air and into our plants is kind of tricky. That's why nitrogen fertilizer is so expensive. The bond between two nitrogen molecules is the strongest bond found in nature. It's a triple bond that is extremely difficult to break. In nature, this bond it cannot be broken by plants, but only by microbes that contain a certain enzyme. Now, about 110 years ago, a couple of German scientists, Haber and Bosch, found out a process that they were able to use an energy source to break intense heat and pressure and energy to break that nitrogen bond and manufacture commercial nitrogen fertilizer. And this was uh, very effective, worked well, and makes nitrogen fertilizer. The only problem is it takes a huge amount of energy. And as energy prices go up, this process becomes increasingly more expensive. And uh, there's some also some concerns about what effect commercial nitrogen fertilizer has on our soil microbiology. So there's more and more interest in how can we obtain nitrogen from natural sources rather than having to go and purchase commercial nitrogen fertilizer. Historically, the way of doing producing our nitrogen has been with by rotating with legume crops or in uh, mixtures of grasses and legumes. And here at Green Cover Seed, we specialize in cover crops, and we have found that there's a lot of benefit to plant diversity, having both grasses and legumes and forbs and brassicas, all different plant types together. Problem with that is, is that legumes tend not to share nitrogen with other plants. They like to use the nitrogen for themselves and now it becomes available when those legumes die and decay might become available to the next crop but they don't share much with the crops next to them. Some, to be sure, but not as much as we'd like. Never seems to be enough to maximize the growth of their neighbors. What if there was a way that all the other plants in that cover crop mix could also mix, make their own nitrogen? Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, actually there is. And uh, the bacteria I've got up here, the azospirillum, this is an organism that's, that's very well known to science. It's actually, uh, there's more azospirillum inoculant used worldwide than there is the rhizobium inoculants that we use to inoculate legumes. Um, very effective nitrogen fixing organism. Um, does it produce huge amounts of nitrogen. We will never be able to produce enough nitrogen uh, with our current strains of bacteria to grow 200 bushel corn. So this does not replace commercial nitrogen fertilizer. But in most of our grass legume cover crop or perennial pasture mixes, we're not putting commercial nitrogen fertilizer out there because if you do that, it makes the legumes lazy. They won't produce their own nitrogen that way. So, the niche that this organism and the other organisms that we're going to talk about, the niche that they have is in a mixture of grass and legumes that's not receiving nitrogen fertilizer. Um, there's also some other benefits of the azospirone. They also produce hormones that increase root elongation. You can see these, uh, the rice seedlings over here to the right have were inoculated. Look at the additional root elongation that you get. The azospirillum produces auxins that increase root elongation. <coughs> now 
Now, um, this is some uh, research on pasture grass in uh, Israel. Like I said, these are very well researched organisms overseas. Uh, very poorly researched in the United States. Doesn't mean they don't work here. It's just that in this country, historically, nitrogen fertilizer was so cheap, so available, so abundant, that we really didn't pay any attention to these. In foreign countries that do not have the fertilizer distribution infrastructure that we have, a lot of interest in these organisms. They've been really used, like I said, more nitrogen fixing organisms put on uh, azospirillum, uh, azotobacter, the other organism we're going to talk about, more used worldwide than rhizobium bacteria. It goes on legumes. You can see uh, this is the control on pasture grass. This is the treated. See a dramatic increase in biomass. This is an unfertilized condition as a lot of pasture grass situations are. Um, here's some data from India on uh, sorghum. And this is actually grain sorghum. Probably works a little better on forage sorghum, sorghum sedan, than it does on grain sorghum. But look at this percent increase in yield, 15. And this is both unfertilized, and this is 40 pounds of nitrogen fertilizer. So you can see in almost every situation, the unfertilized had a better response to the inoculation than the fertilized. But in every instance, there's a, a really nice... Sometimes the fertilized didn't respond that much, but in every instance, the unfertilized one had a really nice bump in yield. The other nitrogen-fixing organism, in addition to azospirillum, is azotobacter, another free-living nitrogen-fixing organism. Comparing the two, the azospirillum tends to be a little more productive of nitrogen under optimum conditions, but much less reliable. The azotobacter is kind of the slow and steady. This is the tortoise. The azospirillum is the hare. Uh, one's a racehorse. This is the plow horse. Um, more consistent, able to survive longer periods of time under unfavorable conditions. When you put the two together, you get much more consistent results. A uh, little diversity, just like diversity of plant types, gives better results. Diversity of microbes gives better types. Now we have uh, put together an inoculant that combines these two organisms together. Makes uh, We can apply it to cover crops. We can uh, apply it to just basically any crop and turn them into a plant capable of fixing a moderate amount of nitrogen uh, as we saw in the research, 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre seems to be kind of a top end. Uh, I'd say 20 is probably more reasonable. Uh, I have used this uh, product myself and uh, I like the results. Uh, it's, it's not night and day difference, but it is a very definite visual difference in growth and green appearance in my perennial pastures. Very excited about the possibility of this. It's very cheap. Uh, we're talking less than $3 an acre to apply this. If you can get 20 pounds of nitrogen for $3 an acre, why not? I mean, it, it's to me, it's, it's kind of a slam dunk. One thing we do not know is how long these organisms persist in the soil, whether they will carry over. We know what they'll do on the cover crop. Will they also carry over to the following crop? Um, we don't know. Uh, but we suspect there will be some carryover effect, maybe not 100%. Where I really like to use this, in addition to perennial grass legume pastures, um, sorghum seems to be an exceptional host for this. A lot of times sorghum sedan that's used for forage, uh, forage sorghums used for forage are routinely under-fertilized because people are scared of nitrate toxicity. The form of nitrogen these bacteria produce is ammonium. Plants take up the ammonium from the bacteria rather than as nitrate. So this would be a safer nitrogen form than commercial nitrogen, which tends to be converted very quickly 
in the nitrate in the soil. So um, I think in uh, you know a lot of times people will plant sorghum sedan cow peas together, or sorghum sedan sun hemp or mung beans, a grass legume mixture for better animal nutrition. You can actually turn that sorghum into a nitrogen fixer with these organisms. Like I said, not huge yield impact, but beneficial. So anyhow, this is something we're playing around with. I'm very excited about the potential. It's not going to be huge yield increases, huge amounts of nitrogen, but it's a definite benefit. Um, as long as you keep your expectations in line with uh, you know, moderate bump in yield, moderate bump in nitrogen fixation, I think this is a product that would be very helpful.